Hi, I'm Philippa and welcome to my channel, Awkward the Talk, where I give parents the tools, skills and courage to provide their children with mindful sexual education. So today's topic is sexual education helps prevent sexual abuse. Um, one of the things that I have found in my work is that a lot of parents uh, who are reluctant to give their children sexual education is because they are scared that said sexual education is actually going to expose children to uh, inappropriate ideas and content. Um, but we, it has been proven that children who, uh, who have poor sexual education are, are actually more um, susceptible to low self-esteem, um, who are uh, more likely to engage in risky behavior, um, and who are more likely to um, um, experiment more with drugs and alcohol. Uh, so there's a series of, of, of uh, negative effects that come from not giving your child an adequate sexual education. Uh, there, what I have found is also that parents do not want to, to their children to have sexual education sometimes because they feel like they are protecting them when we know that the opposite is, is, is true. So there are attitudes that adults and uh, parents have that actually leave children at greater risk of sexual abuse. One of them is believing that um, our children are not at risk of uh, sexual abuse. So to believe that your own kids are not ever at risk because they don't go to dangerous places, right? And this is not a... Um, Unfortunately, this is not true. Uh, unfortunately, anybody um, is at risk of, of uh, any child is at risk of being sexually abused, uh, even if they receive all the sexual education in the world and all the karate lessons in the world. Um, this can still happen, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't protect our children just because it might happen, right? So the more we, information we give them, the more protection we are giving them. Um, Waiting for children to grow up uh, to talk about sexual abuse and self-protection is one of the mistakes. And I understand here that parents do not want to scare their children by talking about sexual abuse. Um, but there are other ways of um, talking about the subject without turning it into a law and order case and uh, be explicit and violent with details, right? So if your child is small, what you wanna be uh, saying is not, you know, you should be careful because there are bad men out there who abuse children. Um, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no point in that. That reminds me of, of a, a, a story that I used to be told when I didn't wanna eat my soup of a bad man that would come with a bag and put children in the back. Um, so there's no point in, in scaring children with these conversations because the point's not to scare them, but to protect them, right? So what can be done? Uh, you wanna be teaching your children about uh, bodily, uh, body and emotional limits, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, what are good secrets and what are bad secrets, um, what is a good and acceptable touch and what is a, a bad and unacceptable touch. Um, and um, you want to be teaching and uh, teaching them the 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 and naming their their body parts and talking about uh, what is private and what is public and talk about and also talking about the um, how how um, their private parts should be their genitals should be taken care of and who can who can um, who can help them bathe and change and who can touch them and um, who can uh, who can touch them and how they should be touched and when. So um, in, without ever mentioning sexual abuse, you can actually give your child uh, the tools to protect themselves uh, and to open a communication channel so that in the case that anything um, untoward ever happens, that they are able to come and talk to you. And um, you may say, oh, that's not prevention because that's already happened. But uh, what we know is also that um, sexual abuse uh, of children is usually continuous. So um, a, a person who sexually abuses a child will not do it just once. It will, the, the, the person will do it over and over again. 
so what you are doing here is that if anything happens, your child is comfortable enough and has the, the, the ability to come to talk to you about something they did not like or something that happened and you can prevent it from happening again or from or for it to to go any further for example um what else um exercising an authoritarian upbringing model based on phys physical or verbal aggression punishment and excessive control and rigidity uh as well as a very permissive upbringing um of you know no rules and limits are both um are both attitudes that um that uh, leave children more at risk of of sexual abuse because um the truth is the sexual predator uh well it's not even a sexual predator the sexual abuser is uh not um it's not some perv in the park who's flashing little children that's what we were told when we were kids that those were the bad man you know and um what that does is that really leaves a very big blind spot to to the reality of sexual abuse that is most of it takes place within um friends close friends of the family family and acquaintances so um it's 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 uh it's um Okay, getting back to that point. Uh, basically, uh, if um, uh, if you if you have a very rigid upbringing, your children will not be able to talk to you about these things. And if you also have an upbringing of uh, that is too permissive and there are no rules and limits, your children will also not know what rules and limits are. So it will be more difficult for them to identify what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Um, to wait um, for the child to ask about um, about the, the questions of sexuality, sex, bodies, feelings uh, and relationships uh, is, is also a way that parents have uh, of dealing with, with, uh, with awkward questions or these awkward topics which is, oh well, if my child hasn't asked me yet, it's because they're not ready to hear. And that's not always the case. Sometimes children don't ask because they are too shy or because maybe they have already made their own little stories up in their heads to answer these questions. And that's not always, um, and these little stories don't always correspond to, to, to reality. Um, another, another, uh, another attitude that, that leaves uh, parents, uh, sorry, children um, at greater risk of sexual abuse is parents not actually um, seeking uh, information and um, knowledge about uh, sexual education because they feel that somebody else will do that. Uh, so that's not your case because you're here on the channel listening to me. So congratulations on already taking a very important step towards uh, protecting your child against, um, against sexual abuse. Um, but these are these are all attitudes and behaviors that can be changed and it is never too late to start giving your child sexual education that is mindful, compre comprehensive and intentional and that also protects them from, um, from sexual abuse. It really is never too late. I sometimes have conversations with, with teenagers that don't know how to how to protect themselves and what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And so if teenagers have these questions and we as a society kind of expect them to know better already without ever having told them what, what they should be, what the limits are, um, then imagine children who, who have even less experience of the world. Uh, so it is never too late to, to give children uh, this very life-saving information.